So why are we here today? Because William fell off four flights of stairs and he split his tongue. This like, isn't the first time he's done this. No, this is the second time. Okay. And the first time it healed pretty nicely. Yes, it did. And he too. didn't he didn't have to have any sutures placed the first time. No, sir. Okay. All right. Hi, buddy. How are you? We just want to do a little teaching video here on um, how to approach tongue lacerations. It's a very common thing. Parents will present to the emergency department all the time, and we're going to give you some guidelines and give parents guidelines, and maybe even doctors and nurses who will be watching this on when you sew these up and when you don't. Okay. All right. Dr. Warner, so talk to me a little bit about um, tongue lacerations and how you approach them. Yeah, so tongue lacerations are a fairly common injury pattern we see in the emergency department, particularly in young, uh, young kids. You know, they tend to run and be active and they have falls. And in those falls, we can get lacerations to our tongue. Uh, today, we decided to fall down some steps and we uh, cut the mid substance of our tongue. And during the assessment uh, of these type injuries, you know, it's easy to get lost in just the tongue laceration. You also have to recognize that there's other things you gotta look for in these falls. So, you know, we, we gotta look for malocclusion of the teeth and in kids that can be a little bit hard. So, you know, you check the angles of the mandible, make sure there's no pain, no TMJ pain. Yeah, because they can sometimes actually fracture the condyles right. from they a fall have... like that too. And they can fracture their teeth too. Right. Right. And speaking to the teeth, you wanna go ahead and sit back, buddy? Um, we, okay. We also <laughs> want to check, you know, to see if we have loose teeth on the top uh, and loose teeth on the bottom because they tend to impact together and cause these tongue lacerations. And there's no, he doesn't have any evidence of, of the teeth jam, being jammed nope. in or anything like that. And his teeth look symmetric. There's no bleeding around the alveolar margins, which is reassuring. And there's no fracture of the teeth either, which is really, okay. really good. Okay. And we look for, does it go very deep in the muscle layer? And it's hard for me to pull it apart here yeah and when i looked underneath earlier you also have to see is it full thickness uh, full thickness would be an indication to repair it and on this young gentleman it doesn't go underneath the tongue yeah, i can see it very nice other areas that we need to look for in tongue lacerations that require repairs are greater than two centimeters in length a large deformity or flap which he doesn't have which is good uh, or a laceration that goes through the center mid substance causing a split or forked tongue. That, you know, anytime you have concern that it may affect speech, you should consider closing them primarily. Uh, fortunately, his seems fairly shallow and we don't have to do that um, today. But again, you know, full thickness injuries, large uh, copious bleeding, irregular deformities or flaps, uh, the lateral margins or the uh, the distal and uh, the anterior surface causing a forked tongue are the primary indications for laceration repair. And of course, as always, uh, clinician preference uh, dictates as well. Generally though, these will require procedural sedation and with suction and monitoring and, um, and, and some way to tr uh, retract and get access to the tongue. Correct. Okay. So basically, what's going to be your instructions when she goes home? Yeah, so the post-care after this type of injury, Mom, is generally regular dent, you know, brushing of the teeth is really, really important twice a day to reduce that oral bacterial burden uh, and also brushing the tongue, but being gentle around the injured area. I'm going to be prescribing Paradex, which is a uh, solution that often is used as an oral rinse. I tend to advise to dip the toothbrush in it and clean all the surfaces of the teeth to reduce that bacterial burden in the mouth. You can also let it um, drain over the end of the tongue. Uh, and if he will spit for you, you can have him rinse it, his mouth at home and spit into the sink. If you don't think he can do that, just you know, rinsing it with a Q-tip uh, in the Paradex can be adequate enough. Um, these can take a little bit of time to heal, but they do heal very, very well. They tend to heal from the inside out. And so time is all that matters. Yes, sir. What, what do you advise about diet? So in the early phases after tongue injury, um, kids sometimes need to eat softer foods simply because it's easier for them to manipulate them in their mouth. Um, but after a couple of days, they tend to eat regular foods without limitation. Um, and then, Probably stay away from really hot or spicy yeah, foods. Salty foods, spicy foods, um, really sour foods can be challenge because they can sting mm -hmm. um, and so those uh, I tend to recommend to avoid um, but again kids will eat what they're willing to eat. Mm -hmm. Juices tend to be acidic as well and those can sting mm -hmm. um, and then making sure we rinse our mouth really really good after we eat is really important. 
What about pain control? So in these type of injuries, um, as you can see, he's not in any extremis, but if he's having some pain with eating or even just generalized pain, uh, Tylenol is very, very effective. Um, you know, there's some mixed discussion on whether or not NSAIDs, ibuprofen or Motrin can make things bleed a little bit more. And I think uh, that would, Motrin would be fine for him as well at his age group.